on this earlier. Oh, well, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. We got a new tech called Post X. We got a new L on Post Chain. New L1, new Dex. Man, Hexkin's got a new lane. See, the tech is finally out. We put an end to this crypto drought. Influencers, watch your mouth. Cause you know we taste that clout. This crypto space is dangerous. Why haters wanna bang on us? Like they sniffing that angel dust. If you come for us, these things of us. Cause we just out here making moves. Not a ton of cryptos you can choose. But if you do your research, you'll win more than you lose. Like my first song, I'm Hexkin. We standing strong and flexing. Other creators hated us. Now we see they stressing. There's a moral with these lessons. And you, you blocked your blessing. I heard you in confession. Those scams gave no protection. People see things in the same now. Crypto said, I reply, how? Everyone has adopted it. It's just the USA now. Most of my crypto family rich. You probably like ain't that a bitch. But we've been in them trenches and climbed up out that crypto ditch. Post chain, post X and X. In crypto, we got next. You wanna grind for that check? But my time's the ultimate flex. I said, post chain, post X and X. In crypto, we got next. You wanna grind for that check? But my time's the ultimate flex. So tell me what your life like. My daytime's my new night's life. I've got more time with family. And everywhere I travel, first class fight. So what's up tonight? X can ball and we have sight. You think it's wrong, but we know it's right. We caught the cake and we did it right. A small percentage of crypto live on the block. We the new kids. X to the 10,000 X in two years. I can't lie, it did what it did. So what's next? Post chain, post X. I got a feeling we both get wrecked. Rich your heart said delay gratification is the ultimate test. We rep from the east to the west. Misunderstandings, we do address. So next time you mention a hexkin on a name, put some respect. We do the most. Nevertheless, we stay patient, never stress. One of many to promote hex. Corey investor, one of the best. Post chain, post X and hex. In crypto, we got next. You want to grind for that check? But my time's the ultimate flex. I said post chain, post X and hex. In crypto, we got next. You want to grind for that check? But my time's the ultimate flex. Yeah. Hello and welcome. Let's unleash the year of the dragon 2024. Pulse chain. How's it going, Hod Pearl? Thanks for being here. How's it going? I got my tea. Look, I got a teapot. Oh, and they match. I love tea. It's tea. I know. I love tea. It's too. Coconut. What flavor is it? Coconut oolong. I love that. I, I, know, like, you I can really like my. Um, I don't know if you can see my, um, my cup, but I really like this cup. Don't ask what? Why. Wait, yeah. what the heck? We have both have, we both have blue. Wait, maybe I should turn my light down. And maybe we could see it. Yeah, hard to see. It, maybe not. What the heck? My I lights are so bright. No, but I, I have a blue. I have a cup that looks just like yours, but it's Fine. lighter, so it won't show up. Oh, Sweet. nice. Hi, chat. How is everybody going? Me and Hopper were just talking before the stream that there's been a lot of chaos, and we are here oh. to bring you the strength of the dragon. Um. So Hot Pro, Year of the Dragon, the dragon symbolizing strength. What else does a dragon symbolize? Do you know? Wealth. Wealth, exactly, exactly. And, and what um, do you think that 2024 mm -hmm. will bring us in crypto? Oh, man, it's a, it's a U.S. election year. And then there's the uh, Bitcoin halvening, I guess, half of the halvening of the payout to the uh, miners and... Uh, you know, the SEC stuff with Richard. Uh, so there's a lot. Just that's the big structure of, of everything. Um, also, it's kind of funny, but, uh, you know, Pulse Chain being out, I believe, when did Pulse Chain launch? It was sometime in May. May 15th. And, uh, yeah. So all of a sudden, I mean, consult your accountant. Don't Don't consult me. This is not financial advice. But if you hold on to something... For more than a year, the capital gains can can change to something more affordable to transact. Pre nice. Possibly, this is not financial advice, but that's another thing that's happening. Is you could you could hold uh, anything that launched from Pulse Chain um, for more than a year. So that's kind of cool. That's a that an exciting cool. little time. Definitely. Um, so yeah, me and Hot Pro, we want to bring you we want to bring you all the news that we have. Um, and to reassure you that you're in the right place. And and for me, like the year 2024, I think especially heading towards November, the end of the year will end very high. But I think there's going to be very highs. There's going to be a lot of very highs and very lows and even on the price charts perhaps a lot of volatility. And, and that leads people getting a little bit crazy, right, because 
goes up, goes down hard, and then people start, um, they start flapping, they start fighting, they start, oh, this coin, that coin, reach, 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 this chain, that chain. Oh, I'm going to go to Solana where 75% of the transactions fail and get into 50 shit coins and um, spread their assets too far. Um, so we're going to go through some Richard Hart assets and tell you why you're in the right place. But before we do, let's have a look at the chat. DJ Bomber, SJ's here. How you doing, SJ? Good Hi, guys. Chat. Um, Hex Glenn is here. Tin Top, Archie. Um, C Hex, my pulse is here. Digital Pharma is here. Hello. And who else do we have? People are coming in. Yeah, so I wanted to talk in general about Richard Hart products just off the top of my head how I feel in general about them. And I don't really verbalise, I think, my main strategy often because it's so ingrained that I just don't feel like I have to verbalise it because it's just there, right? So you have your four products. Um, you obviously have Pulse, which is a gas token on Pulse Chain, Pulse Chain being a layer one fork of Ethereum. You have Pulse X, which is the DEX token. Um, you have Inc, which is the incentive token. So when you stake your LP token in the farm, you can earn Inc. Um, and then you've got Hex on Pulse Chain, which is a completely new coin. There's Hex on Ethereum and there's Hex on Pulse Chain and they're different coins. So Hex on Pulse Chain only just started May the 13th when Pulse was released. So then the question um, for me is always like, yes, majority of my stack is in Richard Hart products. But within those four, like how do you prioritize within the four? And everyone has their own opinion. You've got PLSX maxis. You've got um, people that more favor Pulse, um, perhaps new people or people from outside their Hex ecosystem. Um, you've got Hexicons, which um, a lot of people love Richard Hart products in general, but um, do love Hex. So how do we prioritize? How do we know which one to choose? Um, I spoke about this um, a couple of times briefly, but the way that liquidity is, um, everything is bound together, the Richard Hart products. So if you buy one, they're all kind of joined together. They all kind of go up and down um, together, but they go up and down, not in exactly the same way. So the liquidity for Hex on Pulse Chain is less than the other three. Um, so that means that when things are going down, which they are at the moment, Hex on Pulse Chain will go down more, which it has. And when things go up, Hex on Pulse Chain will go up more because it has less liquidity, so it moves more. So if you're degen gambling, that's who don't get. That's me. Don't that's do me. it, though. Claws, no. <laughs> that's me. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> But the Hex on Pulse chain, oh. like, um, at the moment, like, and I'm, at the moment I mean in the last couple of months, like, the my majority of my stack is in Pulse. Um, and, you know, when the when Pulse chain forked, I pretty much swapped a lot of things into Pulse. Um, and I still, generally speaking, when I make, you know, yeah. good returns elsewhere, I bring it back to Pulse. Um, but I'm talking as, like, a medium-term play, like, in the last couple months, I'm trying to like lean on Hex on Pulse Chain because of that liquidity. Um, and when you do the charts and when you chart things against each other on Dex Screener, and I can show you guys in the chat if you want how to do that. So if you're looking at the four products and you go, which one is the most undervalued? Um, then everything is a ratio and they're all in different combinations of pairs and you need to chart them. Like within the pair, you need to look which one's going down against the other. So say for instance, if I charted Hex compared to Pulse X, and you have to look at the first one, which is hex compared to pulse x. And you saw a chart and the candles are red and they're going down. That means that hex is undervalued compared to pulse x. And if you go through all of the combinations, which I have done, hex is the most undervalued of the four at the moment by far. So that's my little, that's that's what I'm sort of thinking. But if I was to draw like massive bubbles, like as an end game cycle bubble, like which one made the most and then which one is the next one and which one is the next one. Which one. I want it to be Pulse, but I'm kind of over time changing my mind in that I feel like it's going to be Hex on Pulse Chain um, and then it's going to be Pulse and then Pulse X and maybe Ink. Um, and, and we're going to talk a little bit in detail about some really bullish things that are coming for Pulse X, um, speculative things, but things that are, I think, very likely to come. Um, and also for ink, I think there's a lot of things on the horizon that will also pump the price of ink. But it, Hopper, I'm interested in your thoughts. Like, how do you think of the four products? Like, do you think of it in terms of farming or how, how do you sort of think of it? I do. I, in general, I favor Pulse because it's relatively 
I don't want to say it's non-volatile because that's not true at all, but it's kind of my tried and true pulse chain main token of pulse, right? The gas token, the Ethereum of the Ethereum blockchain, right? It's pulse. But depending on the news of like what happens with the farms, you know what I mean? Um, if like the EHEX FUD, which kind of translates to PHEX FUD a little bit, if it's if it's going down, but you know that it's because of more because of FUD than the actual system of it, that's when you scoop stuff up. Or when someone, like especially in a bear, like FUD's a specific token, and you know that it's going to go back up, that's kind of a good time to buy. So with Pulse, PulseX, and Inc., um, and HEX, right, on, on the Pulse chain, as funny as it is, it's kind of good to, to, to watch Twitter a little bit and see what people are saying about it or or watch, you know, some of these sack wallet things, see what's going on, what's pumping. Um, try to figure out the structure of what's going to pump first. This is if you're just going to kind of hedge against them, right, um, and do that play. But you absolutely just have to watch the screen and be present when you're you're doing this because the liquidity is bonded and it it, it goes – it goes up and, and joins each other pretty fairly quickly. So just know what you're doing. Try to figure out what the sentiment of people are because those are the people making the, the green candles or, you know, the sack wall, whatever, right? Like know what's going on behind the scenes as much as possible. Go to the Telegram group rooms, you know, even even if it's just hex.com or pulse chain, just see, see what people are saying. Um, take it with a grain of salt, but look at look at the charts. I mean, don't don't generally buy when when things are uh, green, and then s sell when things are red. People people want to just follow what everyone else is doing, but you kind of want to front run them, right? If you're going to play that game, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think it, it's difficult to do, but you've got to train your brain in the opposite of what it wants to do. So all I see now is opportunity and a massive amount of opportunity, especially with the halving being on the horizon. And we have these dates where we're going to get updates on Richard's um, trial, basically. So on the 8th of April, I believe that Richard's team gives, um, and I could be wrong because there wasn't. Is, there it, wasn't is it the 8th or the 11th? See, everybody is saying Everybody keeps saying 8th or 11th. Um, it's one of the two. And The 8th would be point. amazing because that's the eclipse. <laughs> yeah, it right? would be. It would be. And you basically, from what I can understand, it's discovery. So it's Richard's side of his case um, yeah. presented. But before that happens, there was actually a document uploaded onto Court Listener um, and it was a motion to stay, which basically means, look, do we really have to go to discovery? Um, because this is an actual joke and you're going to cost us a lot of money and waste everyone's time if we go to discovery. And the reason it is a joke is because the SEC has named um, not only Richard Hart the person but the entities of Hex, um, PulseX and Pulse as, um, as defendants, which is strange if you name a software product a defendant, isn't it? So yeah. you're naming like a contract on a blockchain a defendant, like that's just a joke um, and it's it's such a joke that the whole thing should just be thrown out. Um, but the reason why part of me thinks like don't throw it out is like let's just get this done. Like if they're just going to reword it and come back then. I like the idea that they don't even know what ink is too, but that's just yeah, not they just missed it. In there. I just missed like, it off there. They're just going on the website saying, eh, this is what he made. Oh, I know. It, it looked like <laughs> it was made. It was made by, I don't know. It, they, In some aspects, they had done a good job. I think they must have had, obviously, multiple people putting this document together. And maybe one out of the ten people did a good job and the rest just missed the facts. Um, and they just wrote this really emotive language. Like, it, it was just, it wasn't a very professional document and it was full of mistakes. And I won't detail every single mistake because that would be helping them. But um, to name a contract, like a blockchain contract um, as a defendant, it's, it's, I don't even know what they're doing. Like, that's so childish. It's not. I like following nuclear herbs on some of this stuff. 
He's so good yeah. and he made so yeah. many good points. Um, and another good point um, that Richard team is presenting is that they, they don't have jurisdiction. So they haven't made a clear point that um, Richard has targeted US citizens because the SEC um, oversees securities amongst US citizens. And they've made no effort to say, look, um, all of his products are targeting the US. Um, and they've mentioned things that um, there's alleged fraud that's mentioned, but the SEC has no oversight for fraud. So again, it's they like were trying to get CZ on fraud too recently too, right? They're just reaching, just reaching, and they can, everything. They, yeah. And then if you look up um, the documents from the SEC, like how much money are they making? They're making billions of dollars in this, basically out of extortion, because they just cast a wide net. I think there was hundreds of not to mention not just the extortion, but really market manipulation, right? You can you can tank something and everybody knows that you can do it and you're not held liable and you know i i can't have no proof that that's necessarily what's going on but that is functionally what ends up happening when you call xrp you know you get richard hart you get cz you know like these tokens people sell the dip and then they buy two weeks later when that's how long people remember anything is two weeks so yeah. It's, and so if you, if you look at yeah. how much money they're making out of extortion and then how much money they're giving back to the poor investors that they're meant to be protecting, um, there was something like they made billions of dollars, and this is public information, you can just Google it. They made, I don't know how many billions of dollars they made. They gave away 900 million and 600 million went to the rats. So it went to people so-called dobbying or dobbing in, you know, blockchain stuff. Um, but, you know, that's just it's just rewarding people for basically providing information that may or may not be true um and the whole thing is a joke but if you look at um people can go to court listener and have a look at that motion to stay and the motion to stay is just basically saying like we shouldn't have to go to discovery because this thing is a joke and it is actually a joke there's no jurisdiction um there's a lot of false factual information and they're labeling as defendants software or blockchain technology um which is it should get thrown out just on the face of that. Um, but given how the court system is and everything moving so, you know, slowly and how much money was sacrificed, then it probably will go to discovery. Um, but, yeah, either way, I don't think particularly the case will affect our cycle. And I think the dates have remained that uh, the date on April 8th or the 11th will be Richard's half of the discovery and then... There's a date in June, I think, which is the SEC's reply. And then in October, I think there's the actual court hearing about it. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of things going on. And um, I wanted to name this stream the Year of the Dragon because I can see that there could be announcements that come out, right? And one announcement might sound super bullish and one announcement might sound super bearish. Um, and I would just encourage people with your conviction tokens not to move them around too much um, because at one point you might feel top of the world, at the next point you might feel on the ground, and it doesn't really matter what you feel because it's not the end of the cycle. Um, so we'll say hi to the chat a bit more, and then we'll get into some particulars that I want to – and Georgia hey, Kiera is in the chat. Hey, Georgia. She yeah, hey. She, oh, um, yeah. She had, to, um, she had to change – unfortunately, she has to drive into work now, I think. So. Oh, okay. Thing. She used to work from home. What's going on, Georgia? Now she's probably hey. on the road. We miss you too, Georgia. We can see you in the chat. She's um, driving and then there's a stream on the phone. I know, and she's usually on our stream. Um, so, Tintop, it doesn't matter much to me what the prices are today. What truly matters most to me is the number of tokens I've accumulated by the time the bull market top comes around exactly. Um, so you all should have your targets that are just a little bit out of reach so that we can try and meet our targets when it comes to conviction coins so i have a pulse target and i'm a little bit away from my target so georgia has some trial information Woo. Oh, really? um so the uh, 11th, 11th. is the 11th at 10 30 eastern richard hart attorneys and sec attorneys go in front of the judge Woof. imagine if that was like live streamed that would be i'm glad i take notes during your streams cause <laughs> because people just give me dates and stuff i love know. it what else have you got in there, chat? Release your alpha. Release it. Anything you want me to pull up, I can pull it up for you and we can go through it. 
Okay, here we go. See hacks, my pulse. Market's running out of days, y'all. One day soon, Richard Hart will be streaming again. Can't to see what he's got to say. Fucking legend. Whoops. I'm not your carpet ride. I am the sky. I love it. Sorry about the I'm swear in word. the highway. Extortion manipulation overreach. Backroom bribes. Insider trading. Your tax dollars at work. Exactly. Gary Gensler went to the Bahamas and he visited SPF. And who do you think paid for that trip? Not him. And there's probably pictures and videos of him in the Bahamas and it should be made public and it's disgusting. Um, okay, let's get into some stuff that I wanted to go through. So we talked about um, stuff being undervalued, what I think is undervalued. What's your favourite, by the way, at the moment, um, Hodpro, out of the four? Oh, I, I hate saying this because I don't want people to follow me and say they're wrecked, but um, EHEX is pretty cheap. <laughs> we were talking about this before the stream. We're I know, and I know, you, I know you said that to me too, and it seems like I'm a big copier, but I was looking today at the price uh, – so I was trying to calculate what oh, percentage good. it would have to go up for it to go, you know, a certain amount of cents. And I'm like, God, you know, uh, even PHEX is at a, at a steal. What is it right now? Well, let me let me bring uh, up the Go Pulse, and then I want to bring up PHEX. 0. 0.009 EHEX or PHEX. If I go into mm. this tab and go like this, might be an easy way to do it. Yeah. Oh, EHEX. Share Point screen. 0. Let's go through some price action. Oh, you can see it pretty good. Um, so we're in the red. We all know it, um, which means that you should be not financial advice considering to buy if you can. So hex is um, less than one cent or one penny, um, and that always tells you it's a good buy. You can see the other prices there. So PLS, I mean, the I always used to think that the SAC price was being defended, and it relatively, I think the support line is defended still. Um, and then you've got the other prices up there. Ink at $4.50. Yeah, so I've I've turned my bullishness um, in regards to ink into eHex controversially, which goes against my last stream, and I was speaking to Hodpool about this before the show. And if you are onboarding a new person, you must tell them about Hex on Pulse Chain. Um, the gas fees are a lot less. Um, it's going to be a unified message and staking. Um, it's important that they're able to stake uh, because you should be transacting on Pulse Chain because of the cheap gas fees and Hex... Um, from Ethereum, you can't stake it currently on Pulse Chain. So there's that limiting factor. So for overall onboarding, that's the message. It's hex on Pulse Chain. Um, but when it comes to if you've got new money on the side, then not swapping what you've already got into eHex. But if you have some new dry powder, at the moment, it's a speculative play to buy some eHex because the prices are so cheap. Um, and you can get a million eHex for a relatively small amount of money compared to what you had to buy last cycle. In addition to that, there has been an update on what possibly could be coming for eHex. And this is pure speculation, and I'm not endorsing this, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on this, and I will bring up a tweet. Just share screen. Okie dokie. You guys can see it? Yep. So Ben Sierra, and I just come across this recently, and I come across a lot of things because they're in the bookmark section of my husband's computer. <laughs> I go through his bookmarks and try to steal his album. Bless your heart, Claus. <laughs> you playing with <laughs> confession. confession. So <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't tell me, but he just bookmarks it, not for me, for his himself. <laughs> anyway, I go through the bookmarks because I'm not silly. I can see the bookmark, right? Um, anyway, I saw this in the bookmarks. So Ben Sierra, um, and he's talking about a new protocol that may be coming to help um, end eHex stakes without um, the gas fee. So this is the tweet. End stake all your eHex for less than a penny. This is a gift for the strongest hex believers who have never performed an emergency end stake, who appreciate staking ladders, and who are committed to the maximum stake length of 5555 days. It's got a cool little graphic. No sacrifice is required. It's free coins for the best crypto holders. I'm announcing Liquid Hex, a fork of eHex stakes that allows you to mint all of your stake eHex. Along with a crude yield from Ethereum on Pulse Chain, it also saves bleeding stakes by limiting late stake penalties and removes staking altogether as eHex staking has become unpopular. That's 
thus you own a share of a total supply by holding liquid hex. So the details of this are not out yet. Um, and the final execution, because oh. the hex contract is not open source, um, has not been revealed. The rules of the game have not been completely revealed. Um, but he goes on to mention some speculation about what it could involve. One address will receive an additional 20% of the total supply. This information, this information is provided up front for clarity. Second big payday, bonus payouts and the total payout for the hardcore hexagons. 10% for never performing an emergency end stake. 36.9% for having a staking ladder. 55.55% for staking at the maximum length. And the tweet goes on a little bit further and there's a telegram. Um, so Ben is open to coming on stream. I gave him like zero notice to come onto this stream. <laughs> he was not available. But I could kind of sense, and not necessarily to do with Ben's protocol, but just in general, that there is going to be a lot of changes when it comes to eHex. Um, we know that BankX, the cell wall on Ethereum has been removed um, and it seems that they have bridged over and done one-sided liquidity on 9mm from what I've heard. Um, I'm not sure how that's going for them. I can see that the liquidity for eHex is getting less and less and less. I can see people removing their liquidity between Hex and eHex because people yeah. don't want it to damage um basically they they don't want to give bank x a way to exit um they want to they yeah want to that's a big limiting factor on uh on ehex and i it's funny we assume everyone knows that but that's not necessarily the case people talk about it in, in twitter and the telegram room sometimes but uh what happened is uh i believe uh god whale did a sacrifice for bank x and sacrificed a whole lot of e-hex, liquid e-hex. And so that's the story behind that. Yeah, I thought it was 300 yeah. million, but I think it's more like 700 million. So there's a massive game of chicken was, going on. Yeah. Whereby people that aren't really involved, they've got some dry powder on the side. They're speculating that e-hex is a great buy and that some future projects could be developed around eHex to get rid of the problem at the moment, which is um, unstaking, the gas fees associated with unstaking. Um, but what is also happening at the same time is that BankX is trying to dump 700 million um, eHex. And so there's this, this game whereby if BankX waits long enough, their eHex is going to be worth a lot of money. But my feeling is they don't want to wait that long. They don't want to wait 7 to 14 to 15 years for their 700 million to be worth a lot of money. They want to dump it in a shorter time frame. Um, and so basically the people of the community are not allowing that to happen. They're removing the liquidity. They're dropping the, the price is dropping lower and lower and lower. And it's a game of chicken because it's like saying to them, we're going to keep dropping the price lower because we have such a long-term mindset that we will keep dropping the price lower. And in the next two to five years, unless you exit now, you're going to be left with nothing. Um, and so people are waiting for bank X to dump. People don't want that over their head. It's like a sort of Damocles. People are sick of it. And so that's what's kind of playing out in the background to do with eHex. But we in the Hex and Pulse Chain community are of an extremely long-term mindset, or we should be. And so that's why I have been buying eHex, I confess. And Cheers. nothing says long-term like staking that sucker for 5555, five, 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 no matter what Sorry. chain you're on. If you're just going to screw it, stake. Do it. Stake it. But and then you can't touch it because otherwise you'll flick it. Click it about. So that was in eHex news. Um, and we have more news for you guys in terms of PulseX. But before we do, let's see what the chat is up to here. Hi there, chat. Metal Gear Hex. Hi, How's it going? P-Dye. I don't like P-Dye. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll tell you now. I Just really quickly. I don't want to rain on other people's parade. I haven't looked into it properly. That's my main fault. And it's just my general reason is that I've got enough coins. Like say I've got seven coins plus some shit coins. But Dark. I guess yeah just about that <laughs> it's seven plus like a, a shitload of like tiny little things um dust but i've got enough right. like i don't i don't want to or need to have another ecosystem on my shoulders so that's my main reason my second reason is kind of funny like they keep talking about pegging all the time like peg 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 and my little squirrel brain is just thinking about pegging every time and i'm just like think about pegging a lot 
Can you stop? Can you just stop with the word fair? That's, that's the number two reason. Number three, they're so desperate for people to understand. And there's a lot of memes. Um, and I'll post the meme later. Oh, you gotta learn about PHEX. And like the enthusiasm is like, it's just a bit too much for me. It's like if you're so excited to onboard me, then I mean, if it was so fantastic, why do you need to be so excited about it? That's number three. So my my reasons so far are rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to tell you why I don't like it, because I don't want to. That's why. Because it's my channel. And then number four, like they keep alluding to the fact that Richard wants this and Richard's behind it. And if it pegs to a dollar, it means Richard's super wealthy and, and, and that will work out forevermore and I'll be so rich when it pegs to a dollar. It's like, okay, so number one, if Richard supports you, you're counting on him just not to sell his half. It's like that doesn't make sense. Like that's... And he's never said that he's behind it. And I'm sure if somebody asks him publicly, he'll just deny it. And then half of their narrative just falls through. So anyway, that's the reason I don't like. But you know what? Now that I've spoken about it so much, they're going to like force me to investigate and talk about it on another stream. I feel like I've been railroaded into it because they're so enthusiastic and there's so many of them. It's just because you think about stuff, Claus. Other people just say stuff and forget about what they said. You, you're like, oh, I just said something. I need to research it. Oh, I feel like you I've know? been trapped. And I, I like that about you. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that's, oh. I love that you've come on these streams with all this info. I'm literally taking notes, you know. Oh, so I might, like complain. my investigation time has gone down, which is another reason why I didn't want to go into Peter. Well, but. because honestly, when, when, because we had a pump and then we had a subsequent dump pretty quickly and kind of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, harshly, right? It really went up and down. And so if you were to go and analyze every dumb bear market, stupid thing that would happen right after that, you'd, you'd get yourself into a frenzy because whenever that happens, just the dumbest stuff ever, it's almost better to just disconnect, disconnect and wait for it to stop just, you know, being a yeah. spring. And because, I mean, people get... People get wrecked with the dump and the pump. They'll get the pump and they'll yeah. think they could spend the money on just whatever. Oh, I wonder what mean coin will be will be good, you know? And they Even just on secondary projects, people them. are getting wrecked. It's like I've spoken about yeah. this before. Like if you can imagine, um, like I'm quite a visual thinker. Like your core should be the biggest circle, right? And then you have the secondary projects, which is another circle around the core, but it's smaller um like there's a big core that's the circle and then a, a sliver that's your secondary projects and then an even smaller sliver which is like your meme coins right so you can get wrecked on secondary projects and so much focus on a secondary project for me is not healthy i'll use a secondary project for three to six months and then put it back into pulse um but to get obsessed about a secondary project it just doesn't fit my it doesn't fit my overall strategy um so that's a and people, I worry about people that go into a secondary project and they become fixated and obsessed with that secondary project. Oh, it's going to take over the world and we're going to come up with our own new chain based on this secondary project and I'm going to take all the community here and we're going to go there and it's going to be amazing. And it's like, and that never plays out. Like it never, ever, ever plays out. And and I think like after two years of, um, you know, thinking, um, really believing in a lot of different secondary projects, I've seen most of them die and they and, and have and that's not true for all of them they have their purpose they, they really do have their purpose but um it's not your core it's not richard hart products um, well a scary thing i see a lot and i'm not pointing my finger at any specific thing this is really a general thing is when when people are super bullish over you know a side product a secondary product you have to wonder how many of these people have lost a lot of money in the bear and they're trying to recoup yeah. Yeah. And you need to read, learn how to read liquidity, who, you know, who's, who's putting up liquidity, what percentage of the person's putting up massive liquidity. If there is no liquidity, then mm -hmm. um, is that because they want to pump it high and get that, you know, green bubble on go pulse to be gigantic, you know, and it happens a lot with, with volatility. And a lot of people don't know how to read these things. They don't understand the, not only do they not read white papers or the white papers don't exist, but just in straight meme coins. Um, and you can use this to your advantage and make money off of them too, if you know how to read it. But uh, I mean, in general, low liquidity means that you can pump and dump it faster. So that makes it attractive for people who 
you know, either either during a pump feel like they have the extra money to the, to spend, or during a dump they they feel that pressure to recoup like a like a gambler, right? And they want to go in and and just jump into something that seems like it's going up and down a lot without. And they don't research it because they're afraid if they research it by the time they understand it, it's the pump's going to be over. Right. Because yeah. it's such a fast thing. That's scary. That's a scary way to do things. Yeah. It's they not, don't um, like doing it's it. not, Hey Maddie, it's not cool. Like, and what, I mean, one thing that you can do when you are researching a new project on deck screener, there's like a right hand sided panel and they have these flags and alert sections that you can click on and it will give you what the flags and alerts are. And sometimes it's the fact that, um, you know, they can take their liquidity, like they have a transfer. I think they use the term something like transferable, which just means they can just pull the liquidity if they feel like it. And the liquidity rugs are getting more sophisticated. So just, just so if you see a large amount of liquidity, it doesn't mean that it can't be pulled immediately. And we've seen that happen right. in real time, right? And I won't name the project, but it's just happened recently. And it took a lot of people, a lot of people were taken time. off guard I mean, the project was funny, it had great memes, it had a great website, but the founders of the project decided they weren't making enough money or people were dumping on them. And so they blamed the whales for dumping and then they just pulled the liquidity um, and people were wrecked. And people mm. started loving that project and tweeting all about it and they just pulled the liquidity. So it's, yeah, you have to realise if you're going to do something like a meme coin or a project like that, that it's a small amount of money. I want to get into the news about PulseX and we're going to bring up a tweet from KDP. She's been doing some banger tweets. I get a lot of new information from her. She yeah, she's her. she's full time uh, pulse chaining, so right on. Yeah, thanks, Katie. You know. There's been like thanks for pumping our bags, Katie. Thanks, Katie. There's been two major <laughs> Katie in the last. Um, yeah. Let's read a pin tweet first. I trust this man. I truly believe he's a force of good in the world. He's about to change many lives. Who's with me? And she's got a lovely photo of Richard there. And Katie um, was also talking about um, everything being undervalued. And with that should trigger your um, it's a good time to buy a zone. So this is a tweet oh, I yeah. wanted to get to. There's two different tweets. And this one is to do with sex listings, which we mentioned in the last stream. So um, she just heard from her sex um <laughs> A sex friend. I'm sorry. Now you're doing it, Claus. You told me to stop it and look at you. I'm sorry. I just heard from my CEX listing friend um, that the MEXC application for listing Pulse was approved. Um, looks like the community could have Pulse listed on MEXC soon, thanks to all the projects who are putting the funds together for the listing. And she goes on in the comments to mention um, the fact that the Pulse Chain Foundation was responsible for organising those funds and who the exact, okay. um, who exactly the donors were. Um, so I wanted to talk, um, Hodprill, about, and we talked a little bit about this last stream, about the pros and cons of a centralised exchange listing. I mean, what are your thoughts about right. this news about MEXC? Um, I have... I will say off the top, I have not used MEXC before, and some people prefer it, some people don't. I have no opinion on it because I have not used it. I haven't looked it, into it enough. But in general, I like the idea of Pulse. Um, well, I'll start off by saying this. BitBoy actually had a, a, a Twitter space he was in um, with, you know, talking about Pulse Chain with, before his fight. Oh, I'm fuzzy. Um, where he said he believed the biggest thing that uh, just bring Hexagon a head closer like do. this and then come back. I know, dang it. You know what? If I do this light thing. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, there we go. Yeah, you're back. There we go. Yeah, but he, he said it was important to differentiate differentiate Hex and Pulse um, because I know we're all Richard Hart Maxis and everything, but they are two very different, functionally very different tokens. And we are more likely to get Pulse on a uh, centralized exchange than HEX, because obviously with HEX, um, you know, you hold HEX in your own wallet and you stake it. That's that's the whole functionality. It's the real DeFi functionality, right? And and Pulse is is not, it's not the same for Pulse. It's actually just a hard fork of Ethereum and every, sec, every centralized exchange has an Ethereum listing. So it's way more likely for us to get Pulse on these listings, but again, um, we have to get them on the listing, right? I know there's a current SEC case going on, so that might affect things. 
MEXC is one of these things where, okay, I guess you can raise money and, and put it on the exchange. So I don't recommend any central parking all of your funds on any centralized exchange. I think you should use it to onboard off, you know, off board. And if you're going to park any funds in there, do it with a percentage of your bags, but not the entirety. Get your own wallet and send it to your own wallet if you're going to use a centralized exchange. And I'm a, I'm a fan of centralized exchanges. I'm a big fan of DeFi, but I don't think centralized exchanges have no place. I don't think they shouldn't exist, right? I think it's an asinine assumption that just because you're into DeFi, you, you don't agree with centralized exchanges being there doing a, a what they need to do. Um, but yeah, assuming these centralized exchanges are legit and, and not, you know, shady or whatever. And I don't know enough about, you know, this one to, to say... But yeah, I'm, I'm for Pulse being on a centralized exchanges. I think it'd, it'd be huge. It's really hard to onboard people people to Pulse without mm. it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, I get these concerned texts and phone calls and about crypto in general and about Hex and Pulse Chain. Um, and it's frustrating because I know the person on the other end because I've interacted with them so much in the past trying to onboard yeah. them. I know they're not actually going to buy. They're not. They can't figure out MetaMask. They can't. They they have. They're not educated in crypto to even know what the hell to do, and they don't. They're not really willing to get there. And I've had. We've even had um, more onboarding. Like not for the purpose of onboarding, but we went to lunch with one of our friends, and we know that he's quite wealthy, um, and he's into stocks and he's into crypto. So he's not an idiot, right? He's made right. a huge amount of money um, from his trades. Like he's a professional trader. He doesn't work full time, has a lovely house in a lovely suburb, all of these things. And, you know, so we're having conversations about Hex and Pulse Chain. He's like, oh, yeah, what exchange is it on? I'll buy some. And he just buys clips of like 30, 50 grand. He just buys clips of everything um, just when he yeah. feels like it, um, if he thinks it's a good project. And we're like, no, no, it's decentralized. It's not on an exchange. He said, what? Oh, no, well, I'm not interested then. Oh. It's like people, people aren't willing because there's so many things available on a centralised exchange. Why would he go out of his way? He's a busy man. His time's worth money. Why does he want to go and learn about decentralised finance? For him, he doesn't want to learn. He could learn. He's very intelligent. But he wants it on an exchange so, because it's quicker than him. But They're being anxious that we, too. Um, they are, but people have this like false belief that being on the exchange is like going to a bank. There's like this safety factor for them, but because we're educated, we know that centralized exchanges go down. And if you have a hundred percent of your crypto money on an exchange, the whole thing can go down. Um, yeah. So what I wanted to say, this was what um, I'm not quoting Richard, but generally speaking, Richard has said that the price appreciation of a coin comes down to how many people know about a thing, um, know about a thing now. Versus how many people will know about the coin in the future? Um, so there's not enough people that know about it um, at the moment, which is why the price really hasn't gone up at the moment. So in a way, it's like a necessary evil. Uh, it's it's a necessary evil because a lot of mainstream people aren't willing to interact with Hex and Pulse Chain unless it's on an exchange. Despite Check it out, Claus. I retweeted, on, on your note, I retweeted a coin fashion ever seen these coin fashion things and okay. uh the coin fashion it's just confessions from anonymous crypto people usually it's about how they didn't tell their wives they have crypto <laughs> they're divorced or whatever but Where's this one is uh yeah um this one says i work for a major crypto company and 90 percent of the people here don't have a crypto wallet <gasps> wow oh Bless people Even the so people good. working there don't know how to do DeFi and that, you know, yeah, granted, it's an anonymous tip and they probably didn't actually ask every single person. But if but it's a true, you know what I mean? That, that not yeah, everybody knows. It. How to, yeah, I, I believe it's it. Crazy. Like people, people in life a lot of the time, they want this path of least resistance. They want to believe what's shown to them on the television um, and they they want to. They want to, you know, make things easier for them. They want to feel secure. You know, they believe that traditional finance is safe and secure despite them, despite not making money. Like if they look at their own super balance, they'll realize like traditional finance has probably not made them much money in the last five years. But even oh, despite boy. all of that, 
despite all of that, they're still like addicted to having somebody else tell them what to do and believe that. Um, so I feel like the centralized exchange listing is a necessary evil. Um, and I would encourage people not to leave their money on there to use it as a onboarding, offboarding. And of course, like once people get used to our crazy community, we can we can teach them actually how to self custody properly. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll go back to another Katie tweet. This is about a Pulse X update. Um, here we go. All right, here we go. This is actually major, major news. Um, this is the Year of the Dragon news, I believe. Um, and this is going to be, so there's a lot of things happening that are coming up, right? So we've got on the 11th of April, <laughs> we've got part of the discovery date um, where Richard Hart's lawyers, um, attorneys and the SEC join together and Richard's team presents their discovery case. Um, then we have the halving on April the 17th or is it the 19th? Um, so we have the BTC halving coming up. Um, but then we also have the Pulse Chain one year anniversary coming up on May the 13th. May the 13th. Um, so there's some major dates coming up and I can just imagine our price charts are going to swing super hard up and down. And I want to see what's going to happen to EHEX during that, right? Because oh Ethereum so correlated to Bitcoin, but whatever. Don't, don't <laughs> listen to Hard Pro. Mm. Oh, I bought some. Um, so here we go. Oh, so Katie, this is about PulseX update, everyone. So we feel like, I mean, the community has kind of felt like this, like Pulse X has been holding back. Like we know there's updates coming. We know there's going to be massive changes. But um, I think like timing of the cycle, things have been held back a little bit. And there's a lot of people online complaining about this, that and the other. It could be better. Um, and we all know that, right? But it's also like look at the bigger picture. Like it just wasn't time in the cycle. And there is a hint that there is a major update coming. So it looks like PulseX could be about to get an update. Some will at the deployed PulseX on V4, deployed Pancake, stable swap, LP contracts on V4. A bit like Balance Eye, we can exchange stable coins on the decks with next to no slippage. So these are elements from Pancake Swap V4. So Pancake Swap V4 is kind of cool. So you get V2, you know, if you can think about the differences between V2 and V3, it's quite different, right? Like you've got um, you know, this, you've got asymmetric liquidity in V3 compared to symmetrical liquidity in V2. But V4, there's even more updates. So if you go on the pancake, for those swap, don't know, for those that don't know, Pulse X is a fork of Pancake Swap. So ah, that's where go. this is. Yeah, yeah. So there's um the Pancake Swap website. It details this like properly, but. Basically, there's going to be uh, there is the potential, and this might just be one element of for future updates. So there's multi-asset liquidity pools, there's gas optimization, there's flash um, accounting, um, and there's all there's also enhanced pool capabilities. So there's they've got all these things which basically makes order execution more seamless, and you're gonna and big whales are gonna have less slippage. So if they want to exit into stable coins, they can exit into multiple stable coin through multiple stable coin pools at one time and get less slippage in and out. So it's just a more, yeah, it's just an added level of efficiency um, and it's better for order execution basically. Uh, but it, it's big news because it kind of hints that there's going to be staged releases of updates coming to PulseX. Um, and I don't think people realize how much of an effect that's going to have on their bags. So I wonder what effect that would have on the APR of these uh, specific, some of these specific, uh, you know, exactly. pairs. On. So I, I don't actually know the answer to that. I'd have to look it up a little more, but. You know. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I can imagine that there would be it's methodology. redirecting them. Yeah. Yeah. Like basically increase the APR in the pools. You're going to entice people to come over from different chains because of the APR. Um, so people might not realize. So if they go to the PulseX app, so all of the links are through pulsechain.com. Um, and you can you can earn fees in the pools. So just by providing liquidity, there's V1 and V2 pools and you can earn fees there. And actually the fees just in the pools, actually pretty good. And people might not realize that. So if you go online, you can have a little look there. Um, it's around 100% for quite a few different uh, pairs. And then, of course, you've got your farms, which is when you stake your LP token and you earn ink. Um, a lot of those farms, um, obviously, the APR has gone down since because when Pulse Chain first launched, the APR was massively high for adoption. And then people yeah. used it kind of as exit liquidity, and then the APR has slowly dropped over time. 
Um, I think the reversal of that is entirely possible. And I think it's going to be extremely interesting to see how that reversal plays out. And I think one element to that reversal is what we're seeing here with that update about Polsex. But there are many more things, and these are speculative things, that could happen to reverse that trend. Um, so the PRC-ERC uh, narrative, whereby the copy, so everything on Ethereum was copied over to Pulse Chain because it's a fork, right? And so things like wrap BTC. Including DAI. <laughs> including DAI, yeah. Including Which die. Might, one day it might be pegged to a dollar, guys. Pegged, okay. And, <laughs> oh, my squirrel brain. See, it stops. It stops. Like, it also stops, like, when I go through that cycle in my brain, it just starts getting on the little wrap wheel. Anyway, <laughs> seriously lost my train of thought now. Oh, we're like Beavis and Butthead. Uh, but, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So um, Pulse Chain being a fork of Ethereum, everything was copied over into Pulse Chain. Um, so say, for instance, there was a theory that one day the P version of the tokens that were on Ethereum will match the price. They'll match each other in price. There'll be parity between PRC20 and ERC20. So at the moment, uh, one thing that I've always been bullish on is P wrapped BTC. And it's worth about $200 a coin now. But initially, when I come up with this thought and I bound it around Twitter, people were like, you degenerate, p wrap BTC is not worth anything. It's never going to be worth anything. And now it's worth $200 a coin. And that's when we're, our prices are at, I think we're at the bottom. So people I'm, are like, Bitcoin isn't anything. What's it backed by? Stupid computer numbers. <laughs> Idiot. Exactly. exactly. And p -Crow, uh, guys, look at the chart for p -Crow. Um, so at the moment, these P versions, they have very low liquidity, and, but their numbers are rising, right? And interestingly enough, I've mentioned this before, they're all paired to Pulse. So if Pulse or when Pulse rockets, the P version of the copies is also going to increase. And then suddenly people from Ethereum are like, oh, yeah, I guess I, I, guess I better go and get my copy. And then they come over and they realize how amazing we are. And they just stay and provide liquidity and, and amazing APR once everything starts to increase. Look, so people like are paying attention to me on Twitter now that I'm on the Pulse chain. Yeah, <laughs> they stay, stay like just for the social life. It's like an auto compounding thing, right? Like as our numbers increase and as Pulse chain goes up, the P version gets bigger. People are like, oh, yeah, I've got tokens on Pulse chain that were copied for free. I'm going to go and check them out. And then they're like, oh, they're actually worth something. And then they can hang around. I mean, I can't knock anybody going on the train. and like, huh, I know how human psychology works. Yeah, I'm going to buy some. <laughs> yeah. So like the P versions, you heard it here first. P Rap, BTC, P Crow, they're actually going to do really well, I think. P Link, P Shib. Um, and gopulse.com, for people that are on other chains, I shouldn't pull the piss because like I don't know everything about all the other chains. So why would they know everything about us? Um, there is on gopulse.com, there is a balance checker. Um, so there's a balance checker for how much their copies are worth. They can type it in and get surprised. That's pretty cool. I love gopulse.com. Their gopulse is so good. It's amazing. So good. Um, Including so their I bubbles. Oh love my their God. Okay. Um, we're going to wrap it up soon, but do you want to talk about anything you like? Yeah, I want to talk about something dumb and I'm, it's not for sale or anything. I'm just messing around personally for me, but I found this, uh, I found this company that makes uh, personalized energy drinks and I made a pulse chain one. I haven't even told the plaza this yet. So, Have you got a photo? Um, I do, but I'm just going to show you what yep. the can looks like when I get it. Oh my and god, so, that's so exciting. Yeah, so <laughs> like energy it's drink. just a, it's it. just an energy drink and you you can go and you can pick like the the flavor you want. And they do small batches, you know, they're in uh, Southern California, I believe. But I'm like, "Oh, you would be sweet." I'm just I was thinking in my head um, you know, one day when I was just sitting there, my brain's racing like, "Hey, you know, how these girls hand out these monster energy drinks. Hey, big boy, here you go. It's for free. And then it's a the little ice chest. And it's like, what if you hi, you know? And then you look at it, and it's like, you know, pulse chain, hard fork of Ethereum with less gas. Like, what the hell? And you, you, you turn it around. You know, it's, uh, you know, 17% faster than Ethereum. And come on over the bridge. 
and it's just it's got all the links on the bottom like oh Reddit, that's so that's good Reddit, you know it's so good uh, you could have like a qr code and they could like use their phone and they can get like a like linked to like a thousand pulse or something yeah i was looking oh. through sci vibe for a for a richard hart like uh quote for it oh no i'm blurry oh never mind and uh I think the quote I chose was focus on the present and the future. Oh, you know, I which is that. pretty good, but we'll, we'll see. It might, it might look cheese ball. It might look cool. You know what I mean? But, but uh, I don't know. I'm just going to show it. And, and I'm thinking like, if, if this becomes something where people can, can have a label or whatever and start ordering from these, uh, whether or not they use mine or, or whatever. Um, I've never seen a crypto like shield on an energy drink like you go on there and all the info is just idea. on the drink but if you were to go to like a a convention and just hand them out for free for marketing it'd be expensive but it'd be it'd be interesting it'd be worth it you know? though like yeah to get a sponsorship together for a conference yeah. i think that's such a good idea but I mean, yeah i'll show you what it looks like when i get it you know i love energy but, i think that's a, such a good idea like that is that is an excellent idea i'm going to rip through some of these shot. comments here yeah yeah Okay. Hey, Kendall, how you doing? Good to see you. Okay, tin top. My next DCA is going to be PLS and our tokens that generate me more PLS. Do your own research. Yeah, most of my stack is in PLS. I won't lie, I've got high, high hopes for PLS. And people will be like, how did you know? It's like, well, it was pretty easy to see it coming. And I talked about it a lot before it happened. So I hope everybody knows about it now. Um, okay, oh, so yeah. Metal Gear Hex. E-Hex is a longer, riskier play. He die is a guaranteed win. Metal Gear Hex, you have inspired me, the one person in this entire ecosystem, to look up and read on P-Die. So thank you, sir. Um, DJ Bomber. Why can't people accept Bank Hex and just buy? No, we will not accept it. We will not accept it. <laughs> I will. I'll buy some EX. I don't care. <laughs> oh, I don't accept bank X, but I will buy. <laughs> I a silverback, okay. silverback crypto, man. I don't know. But like uh, what people don't talk about with bank X is like, where is their actual project though? It's confusing me. Like, you're not on like the Telegram. No, I is it actually coming out? Is it gonna? Yeah, it's still oh, coming I out. I, I don't know that much about it other than the idea of it is to be a oh god I hope I'm right on this um yeah I think it's, it's supposed to be a stable silver coin. silver backed right. stable coin it might end up being I mean, um a good project I, I haven't look I'm gonna yeah look wouldn't that be you know Wait, we should we should stream with bank x like do they even stream with people oh my gosh I I don't know is that too oh absolutely it would but we're in crypto land. Let's do it during a bear so everyone's extra pissed. Oh, that would be so oh. good. Comments, comments are going to go nuts on that one. Oh, that's going to be oh, hilarious. Man. Okay, we'll, oh, we'll, think about, we'll think about doing it and we'll see how our adrenals feel about it. You know I'll do whatever you tell me to do, Claus. Oh, I don't, I'm going to think about it. I don't think I want the adrenal squeeze because at work I get so much <laughs> adrenal adrenal. squeeze, you doctor. The poor, like, the poor adrenal glands, honestly, I'm going to have to start replacing. Like, I'm going to have to go on adrenal replacement therapy, natural. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be on steroids. <laughs> natural adrenal replacement therapy. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? <sighs> All right, here we go. DJ Bomber, the copied stables are real, believe it or not, it's going to happen. Um, oh, because there's a narrative that all of the copies um, of the stable coins um, are also going to do well. And, like, as much as this sounds like such a silly idea, um, I won't lie, it's an, it's like a meme coin play, but I'm into it. Okay, I shouldn't be, but I am. All right. It's kind of like what happens with our uh, legacy finance in the banks. Just a bunch of bullshit money being, uh, you know, created out of thin air. But guess what? You can still spend it. Yeah, if it works, it works. This guy is awesome. Like, he actually should be on the team, like the promo team. And I love this picture that he's got here. Like, he's rocking it. Okay. He's out there jogging, getting his sunshine. p is designed. Right um, on, man. p -Dye is designed. The dev has three streams and explains it. I know it's boiling, boring, but it's real. Buy 10,000. And thank me later. Metal Gear Hex, I am going to investigate this and consider buying because of you. You're a legend. All right. Da, 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 da. Maddie's here. Hey, Maddie. 
Maddie, yes. All right. Everybody, uh... Much love, Maddie. One chain gambling mm -hmm. coins. Pre proof of history token, a Solana. Or Yvain um, always leaves a comment after my streams, which I appreciate. Guys, if you could leave a comment, help my elbow and like the stream, that would be great. Thanks. What if I leave a comment? I would like you to leave a comment. Help like in the I'll go. Help Algo. Help. Help me. Help Algo. Okay. Happy Friday, everybody. SEO win. Uh, we do stream together quite a bit, Maddie. Hudprill um, is so, she's so lovely to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love being here. It's fun. We have, we have fun. I think, you know why we, we might last longer, not last longer, but like we have fun, whether it's a bull or a bear, because we just know what it is. Like, okay, we're in crypto and we follow it. And it's not just the price. It's about how much you have, what happens. You know, there are ups and downs, but like in general, there is kind of a, if it's not a rug, you know, crypto's not going away. It's just waited out. If something drops and it's real, you don't, you don't have to sell it at, at, at the bottom. Have conviction. Right. Yeah. Have I ever heard of humic acid? I'm sorry. I don't know about humic acid, humic acid. but yeah, some, um, what's yeah. happening now, SJ, at least in Western Australia, where I live, is some pharmacies, like I know that people love natural medicine, right? And I'm not against natural medicine, but some pharmacies incorporate a whole like extra section for natural. They have a natural medicine therapist within the pharmacy, if that kind of makes sense. And for me, they feel like a little bit more legit because they're mixing with the pharmacists and they must come up with like a middle ground, right? Where they're like, yeah, that's not going to kill people. You can have it at our store. Um, so I like the idea of if you're going to get natural therapy to go to one of those pharmacies that's like a traditional pharmacy with a natural element like section within it with a natural therapist because at least they've kind of they've got these um basically registries for natural therapy now um so you can actually tell what's safe and what doses are safe because what people some people do on the internet is they go oh i found this natural therapy it's amazing and then they go and buy it um, but they have no idea that they could just go to a pharmacy and get like the right amount and in a legitimate way. Instead, they're like, oh, they're trying to keep it away from me, this miracle, and I'm going to buy it. And it's actually like they're buying some kind of like, I don't know, fertilizer so that they can harness their natural element. It's like you could get that natural element you're looking for at a legit pharmacy in the right dose instead of poisoning yourself over here on the internet. So that would be my only take is, yeah, if you can, if you can go to like a, a natural therapy that's like incorporated into a pharmacy. I feel like like that's a bit more legit. So yeah, I'm sorry, but I'll look it up after the stream and I'll send you from the registry because there is a natural therapy registry. Oh, I'll, I'll send you a link. Oh, is there? Yeah, um, I'll have to do some Google searching. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Natural therapy registry. We have it at work as well. It might just be Australian. Yeah, I would have to, I'll send it to you after the stream. I don't think I can find it quickly. All right. Okay, everyone, thanks for being here. Um, Hodfrill, any concluding thoughts? Yeah, you all rock and have a wonderful Friday night. It's just gonna be a really fun year. So keep your head up and it's gonna, I feel some crazy energy. It's probably because of the tea, but it's also because I'm bullish on the pulse chain. So uh, rock out. That's about it. Rock and roll. Yep. Have a good one, everyone. Hold on to your seat and don't sell your conviction bags. Bye.